1969, when I was about 20, I was on the last leg of a 10-week trek throughout Europe, and it was in London that Buster Keaton first came into my life. I ran across a cinema that was showing a week-long festival of Buster's films. A huge comedy fan, I decided to check it out almost on a whim. I'd only seen pieces of his films through the years and really didn't know much about him. But then the lights went out, and I've never been so amazed in a cinema. The mostly film students in the pack theater went crazy. They just couldn't believe their eyes. Neither could I. I was awestruck. Almost instantly, I thought that Buster Keaton was simply the coolest, most creative, cinematic, comedic performer I'd ever imagined could exist. At this point in my life, I had not yet realized my ultimate goal of becoming a stand-up comedian. Rather, I was searching for something, for reasons to live my life in a meaningful way. I was riddled with fear and anxiety about leaving college and entering the real world. Buster hit me in my funny bone at just the right time. I was enthralled by his persona and touched that despite his vulnerability, he seemed totally unafraid and I wanted to feel that daring too. I love Keaton so much. He's just so much a part of my DNA. From the moment I first saw him, I knew that I was watching one of the most astonishing artists in history. There's no two ways about it. Along with Lenny Bruce in the world of stand-up, Buster Keaton had more impact on me in comedy than any other comedians ever. There is plenty of geniuses after him, clearly, but to me, Buster came first in his filmmaking while combining his on-screen image with cinematic techniques and stunts never before seen. I mean, from the get-go, he was in a zone as he took apart that camera and learned the nuts and bolts of comedy filmmaking from his mentor and lifelong pal Roscoe Arbuckle and just ran with it. In those early films he made with Arbuckle and then later in his own two real shorts and features, you can see Keaton's hilarious persona, simply rock solid in a tempest. He had this steadiness that mystified me the way he wouldn't let anything get to him. He was like a Prozac in a pork pie hat. He was implacable, unaffected by the worst possible scenarios. His nickname was the Great Stone Face, but that didn't mean he never showed emotion. It was in those eyes of his, that's where the emotion happened. In the middle of a war, dangling over a waterfall, caught up in a riot, it doesn't matter. He's ready to take on the world. That's why he's so heroic to me. Nothing really scares him. Watching Buster flee from hundreds of cops, tussle with his perennial foil, Big Joe Roberts, or get turned around by the uncertainties of life, to still be able to brush himself off and move on from various disasters was the type of cool assurance I could only dream about at that point in my life. I mean, look at that landslide in Seven Chances. He looked as if he was on a hammock in Maui. That's one of the greatest sequences I have ever seen in any movie ever. I recall early on when watching that, I had some quiet envy in how he was able to live life so existentially and unafraid. Through a twist of fate, Buster's widow, Eleanor Keaton, became my close friend. She intuitively felt my love for Buster and opened up to me about the husband she so loved. She even thought my eyes looked like Buster's. She was an amazing woman, and I miss her terribly. Knowing Eleanor gave me an emotional connection to Buster so much so that honestly, I feel like he's a father figure to me in a way. Eleanor knew my work, and I made her laugh, which is a really cool thing, because I felt I would have made Buster laugh, too. I'm not a filmmaker, so I don't know how he did a lot of the stuff in his films. I'll never know. I don't want to know. All I know is that they blew my mind, and I still laugh at them the same way I did back in 69. Buster has hundreds of great images and moments that you never get tired of. There are very few artists that can do that particularly in comedy. I'm not sure if he truly knew his place in history when he died. I hope he did. The thing that is admirable, no matter how unmanageable his life became after the silent era ended, he remained impervious, untouchable, because he never dwelled on the pathos of his real life. Regardless of the outside forces that he had no control over, Buster was still inside his zone, this sweet spot, making magic. I learned from Buster that you can take life on life's terms. You don't try to change it, you say, hey, come at me, I'm ready for you. You can't give Buster Keaton too much credit because he deserves every ounce of it. For Turner Classic Movies, I'm Richard Lewis.
Join us this month as we celebrate Buster Keaton, who delighted audiences with his deadpan expression and fearless comedic style. Sunday nights beginning at 8 p.m. Only on Turner Classic Movies.